Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them Newt's Commander by J. K. Rowling. Forward by the author to appear only in For Wizards version. In 2001, a reprint of the first edition of my book Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was made available to Muggle readers. The Ministry of Magic consented to this unprecedented release to raise money for Comic Relief, a well-respected muggle charity. I was permitted to reissue the book only on condition that a disclaimer was included, assuring muggle readers that it was a work of fiction. Professor Albus Dumbledore agreed to provide a foreword that met the case and we were both delighted that the book raised so much money for some of the world's most vulnerable people. Following the declassification of certain secret documents kept at the Ministry of Magic. The Wizarding World has recently learned a little more about the creation of fantastic beasts and where to find them. I am not yet in a position to tell the full story of my activities during the two decades that Gellert Grindelwald terrorized the Wizarding World. As more documents become declassified over the coming years, I will be freer to speak openly about my role during that dark period in our history. For now, I shall confine myself to correcting a few of the more glaring inaccuracies in recent press reports. In her recent biography, Man or Monster? The Truth About Newt's Commander Rita Skeeter states that I was never a Megizoologist but a Dumbledore spy who used Megizoology as a cover to infiltrate the magical congresses of the United States of America, MACUSA, in 1926. This, as anyone who lived through the 1920s will know, is an absurd claim. No undercover wizard would have chosen to pose as a megizoologist at that period. An interest in magical beasts was considered dangerous and suspect, and taking a case full of such creatures into a major city was, in retrospect, a serious mistake. I went to America to free a trafficked Thunderbird, which was quite risky enough given that MACUSA had a curse to kill policy on all magical creatures at the time. I am proud to say that one year after my visit, President Serafina Pickery instituted a protective order on Thunderbird, an edict she would eventually extend to all magical creatures. At President Pickery's request, I made no mention of the more important American magical creatures in the first edition of Fantastic Beasts, because she wished to deter wizarding sightseers. As the American wizarding community was subject to greater persecution at that time than their European counterparts. And given that I had inadvertently contributed to a serious breach of the International Statue of Secrecy in New York, I agreed. I have reinstated them in their rightful place in this new edition. It would take months to contradict every other wild assertion in Miss Skeeter's book. I shall simply add that, far from being the love rat who left Serafina Pickery heartbroken, the president made it clear that if I didn't leave New York voluntarily and speedily, she would take drastic steps to reject me. It is true that I was the first person ever to capture Gellert Grindelwald and also true that Albus Dumbledore was something more than a schoolteacher to me. More than this I cannot say without fear of breaching the official Magical Secrets Act or, more importantly, 
The confidences that Dumbledore, most private of men, placed in me. Fantastic beasts and where to find them was a labor of love in more ways than one. As I look back over this early book, I relive memories that are etched on every page. Though invisible to the reader, it is my fondest hope that a new generation of witches and wizards will find in its pages fresh reason to love and protect the incredible beasts with whom we share magic. Newt's Commander Editor's Note For Muggle Edition, Usual Gaff Obvious Fiction All Good Fun Nothing to Worry About Hope you enjoy it.